Hmm. Now to another medical topic, sometimes a sensitive one that's not always fun to talk about. Yes, we have got a guest today. This is Nurse Danny from Intermountain Moms. How common is infertility in couples? Yeah, it's a lot more common than people might think, and I think it's important for people to understand that because then if you go through it, you know that there's other people who face it too. About 15% of couples go through it. 15%? Yeah, wow. so line up all your friends. Chances are at least, you know, one out of every 10 has Is it a growing it. number? That's a good question. I don't know that for sure, but I think thanks to modern technology, more couples who have infertility issues are actually able to have a baby of their own. So after you go talk to a doctor, what are some of the new ideas and procedures that you can have done to make sure that you have the happy family you always want? You know, that largely depends on the reason behind the problem in the first place. A lot of women, well, in about half of instances where there's infertility, um, it has something to do with the woman's reproductive tract. So clogged fallopian tubes, or mm. she's not ovulating or something. So if she's not ovulating, you can take a pill to stimulate that. Or there's a procedure to flush out the fallopian tubes. For, actually, it's important for women, too, because I think they feel a lot of guilt when there's infertility to understand that 35% of the time it has to do with the male. Mm -hmm. So like a low sperm count or something, and there's procedures that can be done to help that, too. Okay, on the female side, mm -hmm. you said about the fallopian tubes. And yeah. That sounds like an invasive process to find out. How, how yeah. can someone find out what it might be that's getting in the way? Uh, on the male side, we know. Mm -hmm. On the female side, I mean, it's obvious, right? <laughs> <laughs> on the female side, though, maybe a little more complicated, at least sounds that way. Yeah, they, um, if I understand it correctly, they inject dye up to see if, if the fallopian tubes are blocked or not. And if, if they can't see the dye go all the way through, then they can flush it. And it involves a little bit of pain, but you recover in a day or two and hopefully get pregnant after a lot of women do. Yeah. And that's a, that's a pretty simple thing. Like, it's an easier step before IVF, you know, in vitro fertilization, mm -hmm. those sorts of things. Okay. Because you get down the road, it gets more and more expensive what you try. And yeah. I think it's costly either way, financially as well as emotionally. Whether you face infertility and that fixes it, or you have to do IVF, it's, it's hard to go through. It is an emotional roller coaster for and couples. And you said 35% of the time it's the male, too. Yeah. So, so really it's not about just getting the female checked over and over for right. different things. The male should get checked, too. Boys right? they have should. to go to the doctor, too. Yeah, they should. And if you go, you know, it's really important to remember, if you've been trying for a year and you haven't had success, that's when it's time to go. Okay. They do a test, they check your blood, they ask you simple questions like maybe you cycle too much and so you have a low sperm count. And if you stop cycling, you'll have a baby and that doesn't involve any other additional cost. Okay. You know. Perfect. Good information from Nurse Danny. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Always ask her your questions me. online too. She's full of knowledge. Good, because I have <laughs> many. Okay, good. <laughs> We're going to have to ask those now on TV though. <laughs> right now though, we do need to talk about...